wave until it's live. I don't know. It says I'm live. I can never tell, you know. It says I'm live and then I'm not showing up over here. All right, let me go in here. I'm just setting this up and making this 30. We'll see if this if, if I'm actually live, I don't even know. I might have to go in and start this over because it's just giving me a black screen for some reason. Oh, let's see. Uh, no, okay. Oh, let me mute myself there. That's weird. I shouldn't be able to hear myself. This microphone is working. Can you guys hear me okay? Now I'm gonna go back over to Zoom. Just, you know, if you're just joining, yes, you know, I've got myself cut off with the head. I've cut my own head off. Okay. I'm just adjusting. Sorry, sorry to make everyone seasick. Sorry, okay. Okay. It looks like everything is set up. And let me close this out. I've chopped my own head off for a minute, but it's okay. The microphone seems to be working <laughs> as far as I can tell. Let's go back over here. Today we're gonna to be talking about Etsy and it's probably been 30 seconds. So it's a little too late for YouTube to know that. They listen to what you say in the first few minutes of your, I think the first 30 seconds of the video, you have to say something. And a lot of times that's why people will say, today I'm gonna to tell you blah, 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 blah. But you know what? Um, I don't care. I, at this point, I'm kind of, I've kind of given up on the YouTube algorithm with this specific channel. It's a very long story, but it, you know, um, it, yeah. YouTube thinks that Etsy is get rich quick videos. I've said this before and it's, it's very interesting, uh, what other kinds of, um, what other kinds of videos show up, like when when people are certain when when people watch my channel, YouTube tells me what other kinds of videos you guys watch, and it's not always what I would think would be associated with this channel. And the way that YouTube works, it you know it recommends things to people. All right, I think I'm done with that. I'm just opening up all these tabs now. And um, yeah, so I'm the YouTube algorithm is not my friend. We'll just put it that way. As as far as as far as the topic of this channel goes, which is learning how to build a a real business online as opposed to get rich quick business, get rich slowly with lots of work videos aren't popular. Basically, not. Yeah, and I'm Bill. I'm going to make you a moderator again. Our moderator for today's live is Holidays Lane, AKA Bill. Let me add as moderator. Um, so you guys have to listen to what he says. He's he's your boss. All right. And yeah, yeah Dragon House says, Kara stats say people are finding her for how to set up live streams. That would not be the topic they're looking for. No, you know what I'm found for? Well, you know, it's not what I'm found for. It's what YouTube shows this channel for a lot is things like how to make templates in Canva and sell them fast. There's a lot of Canva template stuff. There's a lot of POD stuff. And that's really not what this channel is intended to be for. But you know, I think that YouTube thinks that Etsy is get rich quick, which says a lot about Etsy. It says more about Etsy than about YouTube, I think. So there you go. All right, and let's talk about what's going on with Etsy this week because there are a few things that seem to be weird. Uh, first, somebody was talking about a glitch in the, in the Etsy forums that's being reported. Now, if you guys ever find a technical glitch on Etsy, just go to the Etsy forums. There's a technical issues category for posts and you can post in there. And that's really the one forum that Etsy admins watch on a regular basis so that they can go and find things that aren't going well on Etsy. And they will actually go in and look to see if there's something technical going on. So if you run across something that's weird, 
like there was some um i'm trying to think there were there were some okay somebody was saying that there's a glitch where you're not being found on mobile past like the third and fourth pages of your listings if somebody is in your shop there are glitches where you can't find your own listings there are glitches where you're somebody was sending a message i just saw this post right before i came on and they're they're getting a thing that says you know, this is an invalid username and you can't use the convo system, even though you've been sending messages to somebody. So anytime you run across anything like that, even, even if it's really minor, just go over to the technical forum, technical issues section of the forums and post about it so that they know that it's happening because they don't know it's happening. If nobody tells them, they don't know that it's happening. And, you know, you get technical issues on any platform. I had somebody yesterday say, I've been trying to check out on your website for, you know, two hours and I can't do it. And I'm like, I, okay. So I had her send me screenshots. I could not replicate this, what was happening on her end, which she basically couldn't get past the entering your credit card information. And as soon as that happened, the wheel started spinning and it never stopped spinning. She's sending me screenshots. So I know it was happening, but I couldn't get it to happen on my end. And I was using desktop, my iPhone and my husband's Android phone couldn't get it to replicate, but at least somebody told me that something's going on. So I would not have known that if nobody told me. So if you ever come across a technical issue like that, just go and post about it because it could be that other people are experiencing the same thing. So that is going on, okay? Um, but I think that that happens occasionally. It's And it's not that, you know, it's not that it's an indexing thing, it's an Etsy technical glitch thing. So that's not something that we really need to worry too much about. Just because you can't see your shop, like your, your listings from your shop, it doesn't mean they're not showing up in search. It's kind of a different mechanism when you go into the shop and you're looking for things. So it is, it is weird. Um, okay, the next thing is the payment reserves. Now, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on the timeline of this, but a couple of weeks ago, I started seeing people who were Canadian. Canadian sellers were saying, I was just put on a payment reserve and I don't know why. And they didn't have any cases open. They didn't have you know, anything happening in their shop that was weird that would require a payment reserve or that would make sense. And so we were thinking maybe it was the tracking because I know Canadian postage is really expensive. And so you, a lot of times people will send things without tracking. So maybe we were thinking, okay, well, maybe Etsy is doing that for tracking. But now it seems that a lot of UK sellers are coming across the same thing. They're getting these payment reserves put on their shops without any understandable reason for it. And, you know, understandable reasons would be cases open against your shop, too many orders coming in and Etsy says we're putting on a payment reserve. Or if your shop is brand new, uh, again, this seems like a, it could be a technical glitch. You might want to post about it in the technical forum, but it could also be that Etsy is doing something countrywide because it seemed to be Canada first and now it's the UK. And I don't know if the, in the Canadian sellers actually, as I say that, I'm thinking the Canadian sellers were saying that even though it said you have a payment reserve, they could still go into their account and request a payout and it was still coming through. So correct me if I'm wrong about that, you guys. But I, it could just be a glitch. And if you have had a payment reserve put on your account and you have you, you are in the UK, go and, go and see if you can request a payout. And you can usually say, like, I want my money tomorrow. And if you're on a weekly schedule or something, you can ask for it sooner and see if it pays out. Because it could just be a glitch that's going out and you're not really on a reserve. I don't know. But it's, yeah, I, I remember now as I'm talking that the people in Canada were requesting the payout and it was coming out. So if you did get that email, try that see if it because it could just be a mistake it could be that they are sending this out um there could be something else behind it we don't know but until and they don't tell you why you know they they just whenever you question it they say oh here's the policy about payment reserves which tells you nothing it tells you nothing so i don't know um the other thing i restarted my other shop okay that's you guys are talking about something else um um, okay, I was on I was on Facebook. No, I'm not. Let me go over to the community tab. The members of this channel, if you want to be a channel member, you can join. Uh, it's on it's on the homepage of the channel. 
I don't push this stuff too much, you know, but you can, you get a, a cool purple star next to your name. Um, let me answer the questions there first, and then we can take some questions and talk about things that you guys want to talk about from the chat. But the first thing Kathy says, I've been taking your Pinterest advice and started creating pins instead of only pinning from Etsy. Now, what she's talking about, I think, is the, I've been talking about this in the Pinterest class, and also in the video I did last week on Thursday was about how you should not be pinning from Etsy directly because of the way that it interacts and it doesn't show what you want it to show for pin. It's not gonna work as well on Pinterest if you pin directly from Etsy and just leave it at that, that's all. Okay, then she says, do you think it's okay to add the link to a section of my vintage shop on the pin in place of the pictured item? Yes, all right. Um, for example, instead of a direct link to the one feed sack, I linked to the entire section of farm sacks. I'm hoping for some multiple sales by highlighting the section. Is this a plan or negative with the Pinterest SEO? I think that's the best way to do it if you have a vintage or one of a kind shop, because it's going to take people to a section where you have those similar things, and it's not going to take them to a listing that's sold out. And it won't show up on Pinterest as a rich pin. That's the downside, but who cares? You know, honestly, if you write the Pinterest SEO the right way and you put the link to the section, it'll take people there. They'll have things to buy. They'll have things to look at. Even if that original thing in the pin itself is sold out, they'll still have other things. That's the best way to do it, especially in a vintage shop. And I, I definitely would not, I would not link just to the item. If you have the opportunity to link to a section and there's more of those products, definitely do that. And it will not hurt you in Pinterest SEO. That actually would be helpful. Okay, next question. Ann says, I decided after getting a payment reserve put on my shop to close it. I'm on permanent vacation mode to use the shop announcement to communicate with customers. Okay, so she had the payment reserve put on. And I think that this was like the last straw for Ann. I remember other posts about this. And she's like, forget it. I'm, I'm just closing my Etsy shop. I can't deal with them. That's understandable completely. Okay, so she has the announcement still there because it's on permanent vacation mode. So the announcement for customers is there and you can put an announcement when you go on vacation that says, I'll be back on this date, I'm on vacation or whatever. You can have that say anything, all right? I said, I'm no longer an active seller, but you can still find me online. What I want to know is what is allowed in this situation. Can you mention your website in the announcement slash banner when you close up? I assume you can't. I don't want to go against the terms of use, but I don't want to miss a potential marketing opportunity. Okay. This is, a, this is an interesting question. If I ever shut my Etsy shop, I would burn it to the ground. I would be posting all over there, my website, you know, go buy on my web, whatever. But that would be a very permanent thing, all right? And if you're going to do that, you have to assume that you are going to be shut down by Etsy. Now, there are shops who have that up all over their homepage, go buy on my website, don't buy here. I mean, like they'll put price $12,000 for a sticker. It's like, don't buy it on Etsy, go buy on my shop. So there are, they blatantly do that. I would never advise you to do that unless you just are done. And you're never gonna go back to Etsy. You will be permanently banned. If they decide to permanently ban your shop, they block you forever. And there are ways around it supposedly, but they, they will find you and they will block you. So I would say that you have, I would, I would put, I mean, if you're definitely not gonna go back, I don't believe in burning bridges, honestly. I, you know, I think that you should leave it open for the option of coming back to Etsy if at any point in the future you wanna do that. But if you don't and you're completely done with them, then who cares? Because if they block you, you're quitting anyway, right? And I do see what you're talking about with the um, marketing opportunity. You could, you could just put, I'm still selling on other platforms. You can find me online on social media. This is my username. And people will do that. If they want to find you, they'll do that. So anyway, Dragon House says, burn that bridge when you get there. Yeah, you have to be careful. I mean, it, it depends because you might be really mad today, but then in six months, you might say, oh, you know what? I wish I hadn't written that letter to the CEO and addressed it personally. And um, yeah, that you don't want to do that. So think about it, but you, you can definitely, if you don't care, do whatever, because if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. 
But I, I personally would not, if I wanted to leave that door open, then I would abide by the terms of use and don't say go shop on my website. I would say, I'm not selling on Etsy currently. You can find me on social media and on my website. I don't know what I would say. I mean, you have to phrase it very carefully. Just don't put your address, don't put the website address there, you know. Um, Etsy hires Liam Neeson. Yeah, you will be, you will be found. No, the thing is, I, I see this, I see this kind of thing. The, the, the problem, the problem that I have with giving advice is I don't want to give advice that's going to get someone's shop shut down because it doesn't hurt me if your shop gets shut down, right? And I've seen a lot of people on YouTube telling people to do stuff that will get your shop shut down. It doesn't hurt them. It's going to hurt the people whose shop gets shut down if you don't want that. So I'm never going to tell somebody, yeah, just go all out. Just go ahead. Who cares? Because you might not want the repercussions of that. And I don't want to be responsible for being the one who told you to do something that's going to get your shop shut down. You have to decide for yourself how far you want to take it. And if you really are done with a platform, you know, but, and yeah, just because there are a million other people doing it, it doesn't mean it's okay. We'll just put that, we'll put it, we'll put that out there. Just because you have a lot of other people doing it and you see it on Etsy, it doesn't mean that they're going to ignore it in your case. They might, they might not. And that's the problem. Okay, Roger says, this is beating a dead horse, but do you know how to reach out to Etsy's help to actually speak to a person? And he said that he followed the advice I gave in one of my lives several weeks ago. I could not get a real person to save his life. You can, um, what you need to do is find the link. Go again, this is, it's a little tricky. You have to go to Etsy, the help section, not the Etsy blog, not the Etsy terms of use. There, there are different places on Etsy. So go to, in your shop dashboard where it says, I think help and support or something like that. Help, I don't know. It's the Etsy help. And I have a blog article about how to contact Etsy. I have a video about how to contact Etsy. It walks through the whole thing so you can see it. But you go in there and you type in contact into the search bar and then wait. And if you type in contact Etsy, it won't come up or something. But if you type in contact and then you wait, contact Etsy support comes up. You can click on that and that will take you to the page where it then gives you more options. So you can choose buy on Etsy, selling on Etsy. And then within that, there are more options. And you have to keep in mind that the people who are answering the phone or the chat are trained in one specific area. And I talked to one of them once and she was like, yeah, they, they give us basic, they give us like the training specifically in the area that you are assigned in like whatever the person is clicking on. So if I'm going in there and I'm looking for selling on Etsy advice, but I click on buying on Etsy, I might get someone who's been trained for customer support, like our customers, not for sellers. So you have to be careful with that because they might not know the answer to your question. But if you find, if you click around in there, click on every single thing and eventually a phone call, like a callback, request a callback will come up somewhere because they have 24 hour phone support. Did you know that? They're supposed to anyway. And somewhere in one of those categories nested inside of one of those drop down menus, there is going to be request a callback. If it's not there, wait a couple of hours because they're supposed it's supposed to be 24 hours now supposedly again supposedly and i keep rubbing my eye because i feel like there's something in my eye but it's probably just thinking about trying to contact etsy support um the callback is the only way that you can talk to a human and if you request an email you might as well just not have clicked anything because that takes them days if not a week you know you're never going to hear back from them the email is terrible. The callback is very fast. And I have never waited more than a couple of minutes for someone to call me back when I've had to do that. And they're usually pretty helpful. The chat is good, except I think now they're starting to use bots for that. So you get a lot of canned responses. And generally what happens with the chat is that you'll say your, your situation and they'll refer you to an article. It's because it's bots looking for it. And it's, it's usually not the right answer. I love going on Etsy chat and asking them to refine the answer. It's like talking to chat GPT, right? 
can you can you clarify this point? And then it gives you the little robo answer back. And then they give you another article. And then they give you a, an answer that contradicts the first one they gave you. But yeah, but the callback is usually pretty good and it will um, it will get back to you pretty quickly. You just have to find it. So if you don't see it, come back in a couple of hours and try it again, but try to stick as close to the topic of the question that you have as possible so that the people who answer the call are actually trained in what you have a question about. Because a lot of times you can go over to the buying on Etsy section and they have phone support there, but they might not be trained in what you want to know. That's the problem. You can try it if you're completely in, you know, a lot of times they'll, they'll say, oh, well, I need to go check with the team, which means I don't know. And I'm going to go find somebody who does say that they know <laughs> whether they do know or not. They say that they know, you know, but we'll, th there you go. Okay. Okay, and Tina and Dina says not callbacks to all countries and not Denmark, for example. That's a good point. Okay, I'm thinking U.S. The the callbacks might not work in every country. That's a very good point. Okay, so if you can't do the callback, do a chat if you can, and if the only response is email support, then you have to do that. But generally, you're going to be able to find something that's better than email. Email is the last resort. That's just the last resort. Okay, if you guys have questions, you can post them now. I am not going back up. So if you have posted anything, I see one thing that says question, but I'm not going to answer it yet. If you, if you see anything, if you have posted something that says question, please just repeat it because my eyes suck and I can't read the tiny type and I'm just gonna start here and go down. That's all. Anyway, I recorded three podcasts this morning. So you'll be seeing this shirt a lot. And if you if you don't know, I, I do a video pod. It's a video podcast. It's on YouTube. I think that they're supposed to be putting it on YouTube music. There's an app that's for YouTube music. And all the podcasts that are on the video channels are supposed to be available there. I don't know if they've rolled that out yet 100%. I was going to download the app and find out. But if people are like, oh, go on Spotify. I'm like, I know. It's, it's too, I, I have enough to do. So I'm gonna stick with YouTube, but if you want to get the YouTube music app, if you desperately need to listen to, if you can't just turn YouTube on on your phone, then you can get the music app and that should work. Okay, how is Zelda going? It's going great. I'm, I don't wanna give out any spoilers, but I, I had to, if you guys have done the first part of Zelda, it gives away a lot of the storyline. And I was, I was not happy with it. And so I went and Googled what's the end of the game. Basically, it's like, what happens at the end? Just to make myself feel better. Welcome to the only level there is, Lena. And that's, there is only one level of membership in this, in this, uh, in this YouTube channel membership. But I do video reviews. I do like listing reviews for you guys, for the members. So you get that and you get to ask questions first. That's all. And puppet shows. I haven't done a puppet show for a while. I need to do one. The last, as last we had it, I have a Tessie over here hanging on the wall. She just had a makeover and she had a new boyfriend named Ramon. So we have to find out what happened with them. I think I know what happened, but you guys don't know yet. Okay, question. If we ever get more, if we if we give more refunds for shipping overcharges, does it count as normal sales refund? Does it affect anything on the shop performance on how Etsy sees our shop as? I don't think so. Um, it, I would try to get the shipping as close as possible so that you don't have to refund things because if customers are paying too much for shipping, they might not buy from you. But if you refund over, you know, shipping overages, Etsy doesn't care about that so much. I just would try to get the shipping price as close to what they're actually going to be paying as possible so that the customers aren't seeing that extra large price and then not buying because of that. So there's that. And actually the, that, oh my God, this reminds me of something else. That Etsy up thing last week uh, was, if you're in the eShop program, you saw me rant about it. The, there's a section in there about SEO. And once again, it was very confusing. They are answering questions that were not asked. The video that's coming out on Thursday on this channel, I went over that one section about, I, I talked about just like the two main things, two or three main things I think, that I saw that were going to confuse people. And I'm already seeing people saying 
what they said proves this and it's it has nothing to do with what they said so anyway but that will be on Thursday and they did mention the cost of shipping if it's too high it can turn customers off because they see that high shipping and they're like I'm not paying that and even you know if if they know that you're going to be refunding well you might but you might not be refunding it just depends I would just get the cost of shipping as close to what it actually is so you don't have to refund people and then they're paying what they see the price and then it's okay you know they can make that decision but try not to refund if you don't have to all right Debbie says oh wait you guys are talking that wasn't a question Oh, yay, Ramon. I know Ramon. There's a long backstory with Ramon, too. I, I should tell you guys that at some point. Okay. I, I don't see any more questions. Should we just wrap this up for today? I thought that somebody had a question earlier, and I'm not going to go back up and look because Bill hadn't said to post your questions yet. But go ahead and repost them. If you had posted something earlier, repost it because I don't see it. Okay. All right. Other than that, I don't have much to say today. We went over the um, we went over the glitches. I was trying to think there was something else that happened that was very glitchy. Just post anything in the technical forums, basically. All right. Uh, let's see. How are you doing? How are you doing on Etsy on May? Have your sales increased or decreased? I just want to understand: Am I doing something wrong or Etsy? I'm, my sales are increasing, but I'm going into what is considered my busy season. Like normally for my business, the summer is the busiest because I sell cake decorations to a lot of wedding cake designers. And that's when people are getting married. It's like the spring months and into the fall. And then everything slows down for me over the holidays. So it's very difficult to say, hey, how, how are you doing? And compare yourself to that. There are way too many things. Don't compare yourself to other people. You don't know what's going on. My sales on Etsy are increasing because I'm going into my busy season. And, you know, if it was decreasing, I would be a little worried. Um, but they have also said that there is a decrease in, there are other decreases going on. People are not necessarily shopping as much right now in general, not just on Etsy, just in general. So it, it, it might not be anything. If, you're, if your sales are decreasing, it might not be anything you are doing. It could just be the economy. It, there's other stuff. You know, there's, there's too many things to consider and you can't really say, how is everyone doing? Because the answers that you get are going to be very biased because people who are doing really well or really okay are not going to say anything because they don't want to be the ones that are like, I'm doing great all the people who are not doing well are going to complain. And that's what you're going to hear of. And that's, that's what you're going to think. Everybody's not doing well. Now my, my sales are increasing. So yes. Thank you, Helen. Helen says, give a thumbs up, give this video a thumbs up. I always forget to say that, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a self promoter. I don't enjoy that. So I forget again with the, with the YouTube algorithm. If you, if you like, if you like get rich quick videos, give this a thumbs up. How's that? All right, uh, question. Just got a survey from Etsy about offsite ads, alternative shipping options, et cetera. Now see, there is a different, there's a different survey that went out because I saw another survey that I did not get, but I did see it and it was not about that. So Etsy does surveys and they have said this, the, the chief financial officer said this during a tech conference. When they send out a survey, they're generally not looking for opinions. They're trying to kind of slide what they're planning in amongst a bunch of other stuff to disguise what they're really trying to think about. Like they're asking about one specific thing with every survey, but they lump a bunch of other stuff on top of it to kind of mix it up so you don't know what they're really looking at. And what they're looking for is how mad are people gonna be? She said, we want to know the amount of rage that's going to be coming to us. And that was, that was pretty much verbatim what she said, which I thought was very funny. So they're planning on doing something. They're planning on releasing some kind of a integration like Etsy recommends this. It's probably just Etsy going to be an affiliate for somebody for different services. I'm not too concerned about it. Any, anything like that that they do is optional. And it doesn't mean that it's the best service out there. It just means that Etsy is getting paid to, you know, there's some kind of a financial arrangement and whatever. So I would not worry about it. And, you know, even if Etsy recommends 
any tool. It doesn't mean it's the right one to use. And in fact, the survey that I saw was asking, would you use this tool? And it was GoDaddy Bookkeeping, and that hasn't existed for the last year. They closed that out last June. So whoever's writing these surveys is not paying attention. They're just throwing things in to try to confuse you. Oh, oh boy. All right, uh, question. What do you know about the new Etsy app? There's nothing to know about it. You have to use it. It's fine. It's an app. I don't do any work, like real work on the app. If I can help it. Sometimes if I'm just taking pictures on my phone for a listing, what I'll do is I'll take the picture on my phone and put it in a on the listing in a draft. And then I go to my desktop and I move them around and I download the pictures onto my desktop and then I can edit them in Photoshop and then re-upload them. I don't really do work on my app, so I don't care because apps are not the full program and it's just a lot harder to get anything done. But we're gonna have to use the app in June. So there's nothing really to know about it. it, it it's just as good as any other app, which is, you know, that says a lot. That says a lot. All right, uh, I just skipped it. Okay, Carolyn says, um, in a week, I'll start getting ready to take my shop off vacation mode. Any hot tips other than making all my listings new and not renewals? No, I mean, when you come back from vacation mode, you just wanna get traffic in there as fast as you can. So just do all the normal stuff. Send, I would send your mailing list. If you want to send your mailing list a discount for Etsy for a flash sale or something like that, you can do that. You know, whether that's gonna help or not, it, when you when you put your shop in vacation mode, it just takes it out of the recency algorithm because there is no recent activity. So they don't Etsy doesn't have that piece of the puzzle. So when you get back, you just have to get as much activity started as possible. You know, um, the more people that are going to your shop, the better, basically. So just send your social media traffic there for a while. If you usually send it to your website, just send it to Etsy for a week, see if that gets things back in motion. But I think really doing every listing in your situation. I'm not saying this for everybody. I would not do this because I have over 800 listings. In Carolyn's situation, making every listing a new listing as opposed to re, like reactivating it. If you've deactivated everything, I would copy and publish the new one. In your situation, I would do that. And I think that's probably gonna be the best chance of getting everything back into the algorithm fast because Etsy takes new listings and tries them out on people. So that's gonna that's gonna work. That's probably better than just turning your shot back on. You know. Okay, sure. Cheryl says another glitch, page four is gone and all of its contents. I've heard many are missing pages. Now, is that page four in your shop though, right? Because if it's page four in your shop, that doesn't mean those listings aren't showing up in search. It just means that when someone is in your shop, they're not seeing page four of your shop. So I'm not, I, you know, I, I can't be too concerned about that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff is things that come and go. We have no control over it. It doesn't explain any sales drops unless all your best sellers are on page four of your shop and people happen to go into your shop and search to page four to look for your listings, which they don't. You know, and it, is it from your homepage? Is it in a section? I can't, I can't worry about that. See, this is, this is the kind of stuff that it's a weird technical glitch, but it doesn't mean that it's impacting your sales in any way, shape or form. It just, it doesn't mean that. So it, it's just a strange, it's a strange thing. And I think that's been going on for a while though, because I know that people were talking about this a while back and somebody said, oh, this has been happening for a while. It, there's nothing you can do about it. Just post in the technical forums and let them figure it out because they're going to have to figure it out. Okay, uh, let's see. Question, any ideas for, I'm trying to, uh, estimating shipping costs when customers buy multiple items? It can be, it can be really off a customer pays, buys 10 very lightweight items. The calculation is way off and they may, it might put people off. If everything that you sell is lightweight, what I do is I have figured out that like in the US, this is in the US, you'd have to look at your own mail system if you're somewhere else. What is the lowest price that you would pay regardless of weight? So in the US, it's four ounces. Like the price for one ounce, two ounce, three ounces, or four ounces is the same. And each of my items weighs one ounce. So in a box itself, it's about 
the box itself is about four ounces up until I get four things in there. But I have to pay the four ounce rate regardless. Now, does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. Four ounces is the least I would pay. Like I have to pay four ounces if it's a one ounce package. If it's a two ounce package, it's the same price. Once you get to four ounces, then five ounces, it's a little bit more. So what I do is I put every single item in my shop that is lightweight at one ounce. And I put the size of the box at one inch by one inch by one inch because that won't add up because that does, Etsy adds up any, any postage program. It's not just Etsy. It adds up the size of the box as well as the weight. So if I have four things in a box, it weighs four ounces, like actually. If I have five things in the box, it weighs five ounces. And it, because of that, I can put one ounce on everything because by the time it gets to four ounces or five ounces, it's just adding another thing. It's a whole thing. Um, you need to sit down and figure it out for yourself. Every postal system is different. And, but I, I find that doing it that way keeps the cost from stacking up too much if you can use calculated shipping. If you can't use calculated shipping, then you have to do the additional item thing where you have, you know, it's, it's 15 cents for each additional item or whatever the cost would be. And that means going in and actually sitting down with a piece of paper and figuring out with the website of your postal service, how much you would be paying at different weights and then figuring out how to do it on Etsy. You just have to mess around with it. You don't have to put the exact weight of each item on Etsy. That has nothing to do with the item. It's all about the postage. So if you have something that weighs 10 ounces, you don't have to put 10 ounces in Etsy. You can put whatever you want, but that's, it's going to affect the overall weight when people do buy more than one thing. So it's just something you have to go in there and experiment with yourself. But I find for light things, just underestimating the box size, number one, and then just putting a real light weight. Generally, when people order more than one thing, it will work. But you do have to go in and test it because it's going to depend on how much it costs to ship things where you are. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. And it is kind of, it's something that you have to go in and kind of mess with. Okay. Uh, I am reading questions. No option of integrated shipping. I have shipping set at cheaper for second, third items, but if a customer only buys one and leaves half the, the and lives half the globe away, I still have to have that covered. Yeah, you might just want to do the, like you're going to have to figure out how much does each extra ounce or I don't know what, you know, how, how they measure, is it by weight? I, I don't know. It, I think it would be by weight. You're going to have to figure out how much each additional unit would cost and just add that as the additional price per item and have the base rate, the cheapest one that you would have to pay. But again, it's the kind of thing that you're gonna to have to figure that out yourself. Um, Cause it, it is just kind of a paper and pencil exercise. You have to go into the postal service website and see what they're charging and figure it out from there. Okay, question. Do you need to reset your settings with a new app? Um, yes, actually because it, I, I installed the new app and anytime you add a new shop to the app also, because when you add it, you can add more than one shop to your app, but you're gonna get the different settings. So if you have them all set to get notifications from every single shop, you're going to get tons of notifications and it's annoying. So go ahead and go in and reset everything the way that you want it when you add the new app in and it will not transfer over from the old one. You do need to check that, yes. Hello, Mrs. Quills. Okay, let me see. Boy, you know what? For some reason, after playing a video game for a long time every day for the last week, my vision is very blurry. And I do have dry eye to begin with. I have dry eyes just like staring at the computer. All right, which settings do you mean? Are you talking about Dragon House says which settings do you mean? I'm, I'm just talking like the, the shipping settings in the listings. You have to just mess with it. it there's, there's no one way that it's gonna work for everyone. You have to go in and mess with what the weight of your products is and just do it that way. I have videos about this on my tutorials channel. So you can go watch that to see if it explains it a little better. It's hard to explain things without being able to show it, but it's, it's just, um, it's something that is individual to every shop. So there's no one way that is gonna work for everyone and you're gonna to have to figure it out, unfortunately. So um, also what you could do is just have a flat shipping rate and add 
the cost of the shipping into the item. And if it's if it's something that you know it's going to cost an extra ten dollars to ship to the U.S., like if it costs, you know, if it costs five dollars to ship within your country and fifteen to ship outside, just add five dollars into the price of the item, and then set international shipping at ten. You know, and that way it covers it a little bit, even if you even if you sell multiple things. And sometimes you have to eat a little bit of the shipping costs. I don't like doing that though. I do not like eating any costs at all. That's if somebody's buying something, they get to pay for it personally. So, all right, question. I want to start on my holiday listings on my store. You know, digit, I'm a digital seller. Is there any way to test items are going to work? You know, you just have to list them. Um, you know, there's this, I just list them and see if they're going to sell, but they might not start selling until closer to the holidays. It depends what it is. Now, I will say that I checked Google Trends recently because I saw that some searches on Pinterest are starting to trend up for holiday, for Christmas. And I check Google Trends and those searches start going up in June and July, and then it just keeps going up until the holidays. So yeah, go ahead and list them. You'd, it doesn't, it costs 20 cents to list something. And I, you know, there's this whole, there's this whole thing out there. It's like test to see what works and then don't sell it anymore. I'm like, yeah, you could do that, but you could just list it for 20 cents and then let it ride for four months and see if it sells. It's not like it's a big investment. So Etsy's cheap that way. Etsy's listing fees are very cheap. You know, it's not it's not a big investment. Go ahead and list things because those sales, those searches are starting to increase this time of year, oddly. It is kind of early right now. I would say like end of beginning of beginning to like mid to end of June is usually when the holiday stuff starts to increase, but it's already started. There was there was some very specific search, I can't remember what it was on Pinterest that had started to go up. So yeah, go just go ahead and list it and see what happens. You don't have to only have things on Etsy that, that sell well. You know, I have tons of things on Etsy that sell very infrequently because they're so specific and they're so niche, but it doesn't mean that you can't have them listed. It doesn't hurt, you know. It's not, it's not like other systems. Etsy doesn't look at your whole shop and say, is everything in the shop selling? It's, it's looking mostly on a listing level. So just go ahead. Um, okay, question, can you tell us about your very beginning on Etsy? Did you have a brainstorm or did I have a brainstorm or, ch or chill? It's that, what is that? Is that, am I reading that right? I have no idea what you mean by that. Did I have a brainstorm? What, no, what I started on Etsy because I was with a, one of my children had surgery and I was sitting in the hospital you know, in her room with nothing to do. So I was knitting hats and I was like, I don't need all these, I don't even wear hats. I'm like, I'll, I'll knit some hats. Why not? Something to do, they're quick. And I listed some on Etsy just to get rid of them and they sold. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. And this was at the time when it was the first, the great recession in 2008. And after that, people started scaling back their weddings and I was doing custom wedding cakes. So I said, look, I'll, I'll just list some gum paste flowers. I figured if people were making their own cakes and they were buying smaller cakes and they wanted to save money, they could buy the flowers from me and then I wouldn't have to make the cake, but I would still be selling to someone who needed the, the services, but they weren't going to buy a cake from me. So I was selling gum paste flowers and tutorials and that kind of thing. Um, but my first Etsy shop was selling knit hats. And then I said, I don't want to knit hats for this, but I do see the possibility of selling on Etsy. And I already had a cake decorating shop. I had I had my website up and it was selling some cake decorations on there. So it wasn't the first time I had sold anything online, but that's how I started out. And since then I've changed my product line and that kind of thing. I, I do not sell now what I did then because it takes too long to make and it's too hard to ship undamaged. And the market has changed a little bit, but not, not that much. It's more that I just don't want to sell that kind of stuff anymore. Um, but that's how, and I was already, I already had a, a wedding cake business, so it's not like it was a brand new thing, you know, uh, I had, I had been in business for, I, I joined Etsy in 2011. I didn't really start selling on it. I think until 2012 or 2013, like taking it seriously. So 
at that point, I'd already been in business for 13 years selling cakes. And yeah, uh, it wasn't a new thing. It wasn't selling, having a business was not a new thing. Etsy was a new thing. But at that point, it was very wedding heavy. Etsy was very wedding focused when it started out. So a lot of brides knew about it. And there was kind of that built in customer base. All right. Uh, let me see. Okay, you guys are still talking about Tina, um, Tina's um, shipping thing. Mrs. Quill says, WTF, I can't say it, is wrong with people. Who is thinking about Christmas now? Enjoy the spring and summer season. Well, there are, people do Christmas in July, so that could be part of it. But yeah, they do start. It start. I, I think it's interesting that it starts so early, but I did go and look it up. And yeah, and, and Bill says there's Christmas in July too. So that, that could be part of it, but people really do start searching for Christmas really early. I don't know. Maybe they had a bad experience last year and they want to save money. And so they're trying to buy things bit by bit, you know, because everybody has that bad experience when that credit card bill comes. You're like, oh my God, how much do I owe? Okay. Janelle says, I've heard some people say that idea pins are dead. Is this the case or should we still continue to create idea pins? Pinterest is, um, Pinterest has consolidated. They haven't gotten rid of, well, they, they have gotten rid of idea pins. It's not that idea pins are dead. Pinterest announced that they are combining idea pins and standard pins to just be pins. And they still haven't rolled this out across the whole platform. I wouldn't worry about idea pins so much. I would just make sure that whatever you're creating, you can put your own link out. Don't just do a pin that stays on Pinterest. You need to be able to link and send people where you want them to go. And that's the important thing. So I know people that never did idea pins because they don't link out. And the point for them of being on Pinterest was to get that traffic off the platform, which really should be our, our point. I was doing idea pins because I was in that creator rewards thing and they were paying me ridiculous money, ridiculous money. If I had been a Pinterest stockholder, I'd be really mad. But that's the only reason I was doing them because I want the traffic off of Pinterest. And now they've gotten rid of idea pins and everything will be better. So I would just go ahead and make pins or video pins. And that's basically what you're going to have the option for. They're, like I said, they're still rolling it out. So if you go in on desktop, I can still go in and hit create and it'll give you the op option for an idea pin, but they're just going to be combining them. They're not getting rid of them per se. They're just combining them so that it's just going to be pins. So it's not that big a deal. Mrs. Quill says, what inspired you to do your own thing? I had been working at, okay, I have... I, I got my master's in counseling psychology and I was working with extremely disturbed children, okay? And doing that made me never want to leave my kids with anybody and never trust kids to be by themselves. So when, when I had kids, I said, I need to do something where I can be at home with them. And I went back to culinary school, I think when, after my first, I was working part time um, and I went back to culinary school to do wedding cakes because I thought, okay, wedding cakes I could do from home. I could be licensed. This is when we lived up Northeast and you could have a licensed kitchen up there and I could be home and make my own schedule and be with the kids. And when we moved down here, it was the same thing. I got licensed. The health inspector came to my house and inspected my kitchen you can bake out of your kitchen in Virginia if you have an inspection. You can't do catering like meat and that kind of stuff. It's a different licensing kind of situation. But for cakes, you can do that. So that's why I wanted to be home with my kids. And that's that was the reason. So there you go. But I had, I had always had kind of an independent entrepreneurial streak. I like, I like selling things. I enjoy that. It's kind of a game. It's kind of fun. All right. Um, let me see, question, how long should I keep it listed before deciding to remove it? What are you talking about? Like, okay, this, this is kind of another question that I think is sort of like the one about how, how do you know how to research what's selling? It does, it's 20 cents for four months, just leave it up. Don't take it down, leave it up there. And, and then you can get the data from the listing 
I'm assuming that you just mean like, how long should you list things and then take it down? Don't take it down. I don't know if there, is somebody out there giving out the advice to just have in your Etsy shop what is selling and take everything else down because that's extremely limiting. That is extremely limiting. There is no store in the world, online or offline, that only has things that are selling. There is That does not exist. Every store, every shop, every store, every business has a clearance section. There are things that just don't sell and you don't know until you put them up. But it, Etsy doesn't care. And I actually do talk about this in the video on Thursday that's coming out. Etsy doesn't care about your shop conversion rate. And that was a very confusing answer that they gave during the SEO presentation and this Etsy up thing, because he didn't, he didn't say conversion rate is important. She, it's, just watch the video. Go back and watch what he said. He did not say conversion rate is important. He said conversions, which means sales on a listing level. It was not that he didn't answer what she asked. All right. And it, it doesn't matter if you have things in your shop that don't sell. I have, I, like I said, I have over 800 listings. And the majority of those don't sell very often, if ever. There's some styles of the edible wafer paper that are really specific. They're very theme-based and people wouldn't buy them unless they're having a party with that theme. It doesn't hurt to have them in my shop, you know? Um, so just the fact that there are two questions that were kind of similar makes me think that people are telling people to take things out of their shop if they don't sell within a certain time, but you don't need to do that. Just leave them up. All right, uh, let's see, question. Do you prefer deleting listings? With, now see, it's the same question. Do you prefer deleting listings which are not selling or edit them with new product? No, don't edit them with a new product. That's gonna screw it up. And Etsy doesn't like you doing that unless it's pretty much the same product and you just have to change a color or something. That is gonna mess you up. Do not delete listings. Just leave the listing up there for the four months that you paid for it. It costs you 20 freaking cents. It's not expensive. So this is this makes me think that there's somebody out there saying to do this, but that's not good advice on Etsy, the way that the platform works. Just don't do it. All right. Uh, yes, they say the listings that don't sell ruin your conversion rate. It's fear mongering. Oh, OK. No. Uh, I bet I know who's saying this, too. Um, no. Etsy does not look at conversion rate in your shop. Like when you go, just watch the video on Thursday. I can't get into this now. Oh my God. It, this, this kind of thing has been around. This advice has been around for a long time and it's always been wrong. It doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Etsy up was trash. I only watched it for an artist I follow, Catnip, to hear what she had to say. Once her video was done, I left the stream, LOL. Yeah. Okay, question. I haven't had a chance to watch Etsy up. What are the top three things you took away from it? I took away from it that the Etsy team is on something that makes them very happy all the time. And it's, it's just company culture. It's very peppy. It's the same as Pinterest. Pinterest company culture is like, everybody better be happy. And if you're not happy enough, we'll tell you that you're being inappropriate. Okay, so that's, I took that away from it. I also took away from it that they're very good at answering questions that they were not asked and they should all be politicians. And I also took away from it that I feel really, really, really bad for beginning sellers who took any kind of anything that they said at face value. I shudder to think of the poor people who believe uh, 90% of what they said. That's all. Um, and Nancy's definitely drinking the Kool-Aid. Yeah, you know, and there was, I actually saw something that some guy from, he was, he used to work at Pinterest and he was posting something about how the Pinterest algorithm worked, like what they look for. And he, he said, this is a memo that I wrote when I was there. And he said, I'm sorry for the bubbly tone. I wrote it when I was at work. It's a thing there. And I'm like, yeah, it is. And when, when I was doing the, the Pinterest um, creator rewards program, you had to be really careful about what you posted in the forums there because there was a specific forum for people who were in that program. And if you had any complaints or anything that, was, that you said, this is not working, and there was a lot that wasn't working because it was a beta program and there were just glitches constantly. So people were always in there posting and complaining about things that weren't going right. 
And it was a legitimate thing because I had a lot of things in there. I had to, I have never contacted Pinterest support so much. Um, but, and they, you know, it's very non and they will give you no answer. You have to write back three times before an actual person will respond to you instead of a robot. And it was frustrating. It was very frustrating. So people would go into the forums and be frustrated. And they were basically told, you need to stop being frustrated because it's not appropriate for your tone. And we're going to ban you from the forum. So, you know, it, it just, it happens. It happens. It's so you're saying don't bother watching it possibly possibly it was so stuffy feeling and the chat felt so fake and polished yeah i mean they were reading off teleprompters it was very hey if i came on here let me here i'll i'll i'm, I'm gonna do one whole i'm gonna do an entire etsy live like let's all talk about etsy and just selling online in general, not just Etsy. Let's talk about running a home-based business. It's great. It just gives you so much opportunity. I can't even do it. It's so fake. It's so fake. Um, and actually, one of the podcasts I just, one of the podcasts I just recorded today, it's going to be for next Sunday. I, the working title is something like, um, oh my gosh, I can't even remember. It was, oh, I wish I'd, oh wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up because it was so good. The working, the working title of this file was, and this is not what I'm gonna title it. It's called Positive Attitude Sucks. Be persistent instead. Okay, and you'll understand when you watch it. That's the working title that I put on the film so that I would know what I was talking about in there. Um, there was just, a, there was like lots of fake positivity in, in that presentation, so. Uh, let's see. Oh, Apple presentations are like that too. Yeah. I don't know. It was like the movie office space. How many pieces of flair do you have? <laughs> Basically. Yeah. And he kept in, oh my gosh, is my camera going crazy here? I think the camera just went nuts on my end. I don't know. Woo. Maybe. Yeah. It's, it's making it, it doesn't like it's, it's saying I'm being too negative. Anyway, um, Pinterest positivity. Pinterest toxicity. Oh yeah, Ella was in that. Yeah, you know, yeah, you've seen it. They they told one person that she needed to adjust her attitude or leave the forums because she was talking about the response that she got from Pinterest um, or the non-response, you know. It's 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 a thing there. And they, yeah, it it's just the corporate culture and it, it anyway. Yeah, that's the claw. Spam that claw. Okay. showing a small item shop. Okay, the thing that you, the only part I liked of the Etsy up was the showing of small item shops, stationary shops. I see, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch that part. I just clicked through like every, I was just like, click, 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 see what's talking, see what's going on. Um, I don't need, I don't need the cheerleading, you know. I would rather have something where they give you hard facts and actionable steps, but they're not gonna do that because you know, nothing, nothing works for everybody. And it's, it's hard I, I, to be fair. It's hard to do that. Actionable steps is hard to do. Everything was very surface. We'll just put it that way. I don't like things that are very surface because I want to spend my time actually learning something new. And I already know the surface stuff, right? So that's all. Um, Okay. Uh, okay. Latrinda says, my money has been put on reserve twice. This makes it very hard to make my products because they are made to order. Are, are you located in the UK? I'm just curious about this because we were just talking about this at the very beginning of the, of this live that they've put, they seem to be putting a lot of shops on reserve who are in the UK. And I, I don't know. I don't know if it's a mistake, but you might want to try, Latrinda, you might want to try going into the payment account and asking for a deposit tomorrow for tomorrow, because some people who had payment reserves put on like in the last, oh, you're not. See, that's interesting too. I just see a lot more payment reserves going out. I would still try this. Go in and, and ask for a deposit tomorrow to see if it's a mistake, because unless they gave you a good reason, and there might be a good reason, I don't know. But if, if there's no good reason that you know of, go in and, and ask for the deposit tomorrow and see if it comes out, you know, see if they give it to you. 
I don't know. Okay, Ann says, I'm a US seller and I got a reserve. Okay, now here's, here's the question. Is, it, is this just a glitch? You say you follow their policies. Yeah, I mean, I, okay. There's something going on about established shops being put on. Yeah, Deb says, I've been seeing a lot of posts about older established shops being put on reserve. That's interesting to me. And I'm seeing the same thing. So if, if you've been put on reserve, anybody, go in and try to ask for a deposit for the next day just to see if you get paid anyway, because it could be a glitch. I don't, I don't, I don't like speculation, but I don't think that this is, if it's not a glitch, then we could just be going toward more reserves. I don't know. And there are a lot of platforms that don't pay you immediately. They should if it's a business and you're selling things, but there are a lot of platforms that pay you on a monthly basis and like 30 days after you make the sale. So who knows? I don't know. We'll see. But I have also been seeing a lot of posts about shops, but it seems to be localized to specific countries. And now there's two people in this chat who say they're in the US or they're not, they're not UK or Canada. So I'm not sure if it's a different country. We'll have to wait and see. I don't know. Okay, last question. What can we do if we have our shop attacked by bots? Over a thousand views without any sales daily. Um, it, there's nothing you can do. This is because it's not your shop, it's Etsy that's being attacked by bots. So it, it's not nothing that you can do unless Etsy takes those out. It does not affect your sales. Bots do not affect your sales. It will affect your conversion rate because it'll artificially lower that because all the bot traffic counts as traffic, but it doesn't affect sales because Etsy doesn't use conversion rate on your shop. Watch my video. Okay, Mrs. Cole says, what's the strangest question you've ever received? I, oh my God, I, I'll think about that one. I will think about that one because I am going to wrap this up. Maybe next week I'll, I'll find the answer to that one. I'll think about it. Um, yeah, but Etsy doesn't use conversion rate on your whole shop for anything. So it looks at individual listings. If a listing is selling over and over and your conversion rate is 0.01% for the whole shop, they don't care. They'll still show that listing. That's all. Okay, I will talk to you guys later. Have a good afternoon. Give this video a thumbs up and I will see you. Watch my video on Thursday. Watch the video on Thursday because it, it does talk about conversion rate a lot and it will point out some things that you might have missed during the Etsy up because they were very vague and very good at not 